which party is serious about stopping the invasion from our southern coast and which party is not. If Labour were in charge, they would be allowing all the Albanian criminals to come to this country. They would be allowing all the small boats to come to the UK. Well, the Crown Prince of Albania responded on Twitter, calling this disproportionate slander and purely xenophobic. So criminal gangs abusing wide open British borders or a convenient scapegoat for a government that's lost control. Well, joining me now is Talk TV with Edgar Richard Tice and the Crown Prince of Albania, Prince Lekker. Well, thank you both indeed for joining me. Uh, if I could talk to you first, uh, Prince Lekker, thank you very much for joining the programme tonight. I read your tweet with great interest. Yeah. They were clearly incensed by the use of language by the Home Secretary. I share your anger at the, at the language she used. I thought it was completely unnecessary. Uh, however, and it is an important however, I think, I think the British people have been surprised to discover now that the majority of people coming into the country illegally on these boats across the channel are now from Albania, which is not a war-torn country at the moment, and they're just bemused as to why this is happening. So let me start with Suella Braverman's views. Why were you so angered by those? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Piers, for welcoming me on your show. It's, um, I'm in Tirana, and it's a wonderful opportunity to actually express the human aspect of this issue. Um, today, uh, this afternoon, I had a cordial conversation with the British ambassador, and he reconfirmed to myself, as well as, as he has reconfirmed to the Albanian authorities, that the comments are not a reflection of the British government, and it's not the political stance of the British government towards Albania. And I would be very happy to say that Albania and, and uh, the United Kingdom have fantastic relations. We are working on a number of multilateral uh, stances. Uh, we've, we are allies uh, in the war in Ukraine. Uh, Albania is a uh, co-signer in the Security Council in protecting uh, the rights and freedoms of the Ukrainians. Albanians are uh, actively working within the confines of NATO and making sure that we are a proud a contributor. We've welcomed over 4,000 uh, refugees from Afghanistan to Albania. We are continuously trying to work on different fronts. So we are currently under attack from Iranian uh, cyber warfare, which has uh, had huge impacts on our uh, cybernetic uh, infrastructure. And we are on the forefront of uh, this global uh, stance of freedom. But obviously, uh, the stance and the rhetoric which has been used in uh, the general media has uh, had an impact. And I have taken this unorthodox stance in going away from the royal position of silence. And I thought that it was needed that we have to mention that the majority of Albanians in the UK are hard-working individuals. We have, uh, and the 12,000 Albanians, in considering uh, the proportionality of the situation, we ha the United Kingdom has over 6.5 million immigrants. 12,000 Albanians cannot be considered a invasion. And I'm very sad that this harsh tone of events is having impacts on the hard-working Albanians currently living in England. I've spoken to family, friends, who are in the UK, and some of them have actually put, pulled their children out of schools because they feel that the xenophobic uh, attitude is reflecting on their lives. And this is why I took this unorthodox stance and actually making a few comments at very late at night on Twitter because I believe very strongly that we have to find tangible results of overcoming this uh, issue and building upon the very strong relations that we Albanians and the UK have together. Have you had any Thank conversation you, with the new Prime Minister Rishi Sunak about this? I, I have not. And I, I know that the Albanian Prime Minister is in contact and is communicating. He has also come out with a very, very strong uh, stance that this is not a reflection of fantastic relations that we have as two different countries. Okay, so let, me bring in, relations me, can't be, uh, okay. let me bring in Richard Tice here. Richard, there's a lot of uh, agitation in the UK about these new statistics, which seem to be suggesting that there is a, a large uh, number of young Albanian men coming in illegally, and the suspicion is 
but many of them are coming to join gangs in the UK. Now, it's hard to assess, I guess, exactly uh, what percentage may be, and it's quite clear that, that many of them will be legitimate and genuine asylum seekers and refugees. Where do we draw the line here? What is your view of this? Well, it appears I'm the person that broke the story uh, a few months ago that four in ten of the migrants are coming from Albania, a NATO member. And as the Crown Prince quite rightly says, we have good relations. And the vast, vast majority of Albanians are wonderful people. And we go to, uh, on holiday there and vice versa. But let's remember, Piers, these people are coming here in these boats illegally. They are illegally entering the country, about 12,000 of them now, when actually Albanians can happily, legally, lawfully come on a six-month visa they can come and work in the United Kingdom. It costs them a few hundred pounds to get such a visa. So if they are legitimate, decent, good, law-abiding citizens of Albania that want to come and contribute to British society, why are they not coming legally and lawfully? The only reason that they would pay ten times that amount to come on a perilous journey in a small boat across the Channel, regrettably, is because they may have different objectives. We know that it's a question of fact that Albanian criminals are the largest group of foreign nationals in our jails. And we know that many of these Albanians are disappearing within days and going to join the Albanian criminal gangs that have now completely taken over and brutally, violently dominated our cocaine trade, our cannabis trade in a horrific way in the towns and cities across the country. They're making vast, vast profits. They need more foot soldiers to get rid of the huge profits. They're money laundering through car washes. They're setting up barber shops in towns and high streets across the country, even candy shops now. And, you know, the British people have had enough. And the Home Secretary expressed the frustration of millions and millions of British people that this criminal activity has to stop. It's no reflection of the wonderful Albanians that the Crown Prince mentioned. It is a reflection of the deep concern about the significant, brutal, violent Albanian criminal gangsters that are causing chaos, okay. violence, now, and murder on me, our streets. OK, yes. let me put this back to the Crown Prince. I mean, there's some interesting Can statistics here, where in 2020, 50 Albanians arrived on these small boats. In 2021, 800. And in 2022, 12,000. So there is clearly a massive seismic shift in numbers here. And it is true, as Richard Tice says, that there are currently 1,336 Albanians imprisoned in England and Wales, and that is the highest foreign nationality incarcerated in that year. So there is clearly a problem with a criminal element here. And the number that are now making the crossing is exponentially rising at such a rate that it would seem to suggest that this can't be divorced in many of these cases from potential criminality. What would you say to that? Well, the first thing, I'm a advocate of free movement. And it's not true that Albanians are given the opportunity to travel freely in the U United Kingdom. They're not issued visas. And when you are forced, uh, you're not given that opportunity of free movement. Uh, a lot of uh, youngsters from not only Albania, but the majority of Albanians are coming out from other European countries because of the pandemic and because of foreseen recession, which Europe is going to be facing in the next two years. So a lot of these young Albanians are trying to find uh, means and methods of crossing uh, into Europe. And unfortunately, once they take that route, which is the legal route, they are the victims of gangs, organized crime. And this is something which I, I'm, I've spoken to you, Ambassador, about. I'm, I'm trying to promote in the sense that we have to find tangible ways of making sure that Albanians are able to travel uh, securely to the UK. And the majority, 53% uh, of Albanians who do go to the U UK are uh, got legitimate concerns. They have different issues and they are given a permission to stay. The Crown Prince is being extremely diplomatic. It's uh, in the 1998 Constitution, the agreement was that the royal family in Albania would keep quiet. Uh, about political matters, and so this is a very, very rare intervention by His Excellency in something which is potentially quite explosive. 
and the opposition party uh, is less forthcoming than the current Prime Minister Eddie Rama about his indignation um, in the language which was chosen by Suella Braverman. The people on the right uh, possibly feel that they are unable to move forward uh, that they that they have um, that they have to pursue some of these illegal routes um, but wh wh whatever whatever the political motivation whatever the political support the reality is that this has been a use an intemperate use of language by a British minister and it has been paralleled by uh, particularly um, some of the gutter press, some of the tabloid press and the telegraph with endless, endless stories. And I think they go beyond what is xenophobic. They're going beyond the xenophobic towards the racist. Racism is where you identify a particular country, a particular group, uh, without any consideration about individuality, simply because of a group's ethnicity they are branded criminals. That is racism, and it is something to be uh, seriously condemned, and it was started by Suella Braverman, who used this language herself. And I think, um, I, I, I think it is fundamentally appalling. The British ambassador in Tirana, the British ambassador to Albania, said that he was disappointed. This is uh, Alastair King-Smith. He said that he was disappointed in the language which was used. Um, and he pointed out in a meeting that had been arranged in Tirana to celebrate, ironically, the uh, 100 years of bilateral relations between the UK and Albania, which have been seriously jeopardised by a Minister of the Crown. And I am appalled. I, we, we, we should poss possibly hear a little bit more about what, um, about what uh, the, um, uh, the Prince, uh, the Crown Prince has to say. Um, let's listen here. Profile of the UK here uh, often don't have the opportunity and that uh, freedom to go back to Albania. And we all know that the new uh, modern TikTok, uh, Instagram uh, view of immigration in the UK is a blurred image of reality. And I believe if uh, the, uh, working with the Albanian government, working with the corporations uh, with, on the international level, we're able to provide this free movement. The majority of Albanians who go with this false impression of a glorious life in the UK will return. I, I do take hindrance that uh, the majority of Albanians are going to go into crime. A lot of Albanians want to be a proactive. They see England as a fantastic country which has provided over the generations uh, servitude. My own family in 1939, when Albania was invaded by the fascists, we went to the UK, we were given uh, refuge, and it's something which I, I resonate very, very much myself. I myself was educated uh, in the UK and I was given the opportunity to join the Royal Military Academy Santos where I commissioned as a officer. And I see that uh, we have a very strong friendship, but I, I don't like this uh, improportionate, and we're talking about proportionality, of uh, the British uh, narrative focusing on Albanians, when at the same time we were talking about the month of June where we had 100 more Albanians than other countries. And legitimately, uh, other countries from the Middle East as well as Africa have different issues. Yeah, can I ask but you, when, when you said you not be the focus of this debate, yeah. when you, yes. you spoke to the, the British ambassador, did the British ambassador directly apologise to you for the use of language by the Home and Secretary? And how can he answer this? The phrase invasion? So we, we don't, uh, nor has Albania requested the uh, apology, because we understand that there is a very uh, strong internal debate within the UK. Uh, the situation is very intense. And it's our uh, stance not to be involved in local politics of the United Kingdom. 
I think Albania has its own intense uh, politics, and I've heard very strong words from the Albanian opposition. Understandably, that a lot of Albanians traveling to the UK are uh, Albanians who are from the right of the political spectrum, that don't find uh, opportunities within the country. But understand the origins of Albania. Albania was a country which, for over 50 years, was a victim of the harshest regime of communism. We've come out of communism finding ourselves in a prolonged uh, transition period, which has had an enormous effect on uh, the lives of the people. And many Albanians who are getting a wage of less than 250 pounds a month want to see a change. And although Albania is a developing uh, country and a country which is having incredible tourism over the last years, encouraging uh, in foreign investment, a lot of these benefits are not being seen by the majority of young Albanians in the villages. So there are issues which I hope that we will be able to tackle, but we have to tackle this okay. together. Let me just give uh, a, this a, is a need. I understand. Let me give a final word there to Richard Tudge. Richard, has anything the Crown Prince said made you think again about your position on this? Not at all, Piers. I, I would remind the Crown Prince, we don't have a free movement arrangement with Albania. We do have a visa scheme. I checked it today. It's £259. You'll get a decision within three or four weeks. No one is forced to come illegally to the United Kingdom in small boats uh, and many of them disappearing, as I say, within days to join gangs just recently. A number of them were caught in cannabis farms. We know that some Albanian criminals who've just been deported within days have come back across the channel in boats. I think the Crown Prince needs to reflect on the fact that unfortunately there is a significant criminal element who are coming to the United Kingdom and who are brutally, violently uh, targeting our towns okay. and cities making illegal profits, and it's got to stop. We've, we've heard both sides of the argument very loudly and clearly. Richard Tice, thank you very much. And Crown Prince, like, I do really appreciate you coming on the programme. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much.